John's First Epistle to the Jews Introduction The authors of the Gospel of John, 1, 2, 3 John, and Revelation are all one and the same person. John, the brother of James, one of the twelve apostles to the nation of Israel, aka the circumcision. In order to understand first, second, and third John better, we must look to the beginning of John's gospel to get some definitions that John has already given to his audience. John 1 verses 1 to 14 In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. These three epistles are an essential part of what is known as the Hebrew epistles. Many erroneously call them the general epistles, which they are anything but general. They are specifically for the nation of Israel in the latter times, which is why they appear after the Pauline epistles, which were written to the body of Christ for the dispensation of grace. Chapter 1 The Light of the World 1 John 1 verse 1 That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, of the word of life. That which was from the beginning, this epistle starts out very similar to the Gospel of John in taking us back to the beginning of time when the word, Jesus, spoke everything into existence, John 1 verse 3. John 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. John uses the pronouns we and our four times in verse 1, and they are in reference to the nation of Israel and their dealings with the Messiah. It was Israel that heard the gospel of the kingdom from his very lips, and that saw him with their very own eyes. Matthew 4 verse 17, From that time Jesus began to preach, and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was Israel that looked upon Jesus, and handled him with their hands. The Gentiles did not hear him because he came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew 10 verses 5 to 9 These twelve Jesus sent forth, and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye have received, freely give. Provide neither gold, nor silver, nor brass in your purses. When a Gentile came to him on one occasion, he did not answer her at first, and then he told her that he had to feed the children first, Israel before her Gentile daughter could be healed. He later healed her daughter after she acknowledged that salvation was of the Jews, just like he told the women at the well. Sadly, however, John recorded that he came unto his own, Israel, and his own received him not. John 1 verse 11, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. The word of life, Notice that the word word is capitalized here referring to the Christ that Israel had with them for 33 and a half years. He was the voice heard walking in the midst of the garden in Genesis 3. He is the word of God incarnate. John 1 verse 14, And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 1 John 1 verse 2, For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and shew unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. The life was manifested. John twice mentions the word manifest in this second verse, because he wants everyone to know that the life that was with the Father has manifested himself in the person of Jesus Christ to Israel. He is primarily referring to Christ's three and a half year ministry, where Israel had seen him personally. And shew unto you that eternal life, Christ is eternal life, because he is the eternal one who gave life to all things. John 14 verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. 1 John 1 verse 3, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son Jesus Christ. Again, Israel saw and heard Christ in the flesh, and the twelve apostles to the nation of Israel had the responsibility to declare him unto the nation of Israel, that ye also may have fellowship with us, 
John is reaching out to the Jews that are dispersed, as well as to those who will be going through the tribulation period that they might have fellowship with them forever in the kingdom, ultimately with the Father and his Son, because John and the other apostles have gone through hard times themselves. 1 John 1 verse 4, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. John says these things write we unto you. He is speaking of the books of Hebrews through Revelation, as they were encouraging those going through hard times back then, and to those who will go through the time of Jacob's trouble, that your joy may be full. The purpose for the epistle is equip Israel to go through the time of Jacob's trouble with a joy that can be full even in the midst of the worst time they will ever see. John 15 verse 11, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. John 16 verses 2 and 4, They shall put you out of the synagogues, yeah, the time cometh, that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. 2 John 1 verse 12, Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you, and speak face to face, that our joy may be full. 1 John 1 verse 5, This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. God is light. Christ told his apostle that God was light. This is not light as we think of light like a candle puts off, but rather John is telling us that God is the illumination of truth and holiness. John 1 verses 4 to 9 above. In him is no darkness at all. Darkness is akin to sin. He was born of a virgin, so as not to be born with the stain of original sin, and then he lived a perfect life always doing those things that pleased the Father. Then he died, as an innocent lamb, sacrificed for the sins of the world. Sinners did not comprehend the light, illumination, that Jesus brought to them. John 1 verses 4 to 5. Israel is to be a light to the Gentiles in the kingdom by telling the Gentile world about the light that had illuminated them for three and a half years. This will occur in the kingdom just after the seven years of Jacob's trouble. Isaiah 42 verses 6 to 7. I the Lord have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Isaiah 60 verses 1 to 3 Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For, behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings, to the brightness of thy rising. 1 John 1 verse 6, If we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie, and do not the truth. Walk in darkness, this is synonymous with walking in sin. A believer during the tribulation period will need to walk in the light and endure unto the end of that time period without taking the mark of the beast in order to enter into the kingdom. Notice that John does not say that they don't know the truth but that after knowing it they willfully choose not to do the truth and to walk in darkness. There will be those during that time that claim to have fellowship with Christ, but it will be a lie because fellowship in that day will require walking with Christ doing the truth. When they walk away from doing the truth, they walk away from the fellowship they had while walking in the light with Christ. This is not how fellowship is determined in the dispensation of grace that Paul talks about that is for today because our salvation is sealed until the day of redemption. They will be under the kingdom program again with the law as a requirement for having fellowship in the light. 1 John 1 verse 7, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. If we walk in the light, this is synonymous with walking in the truth that Jesus gave to Israel. A believer in any age can have a closer fellowship with God and his Son, the farther they are from darkness. The darkness that will befall people in the last times will be unlike anything the world has ever known. Today, we as believers already possess eternal life and we can never lose it. But after the rapture occurs that dispensation of grace is over, things revert back to the way they were when Christ was here on the earth. The law will be in effect during the tribulation period for those kingdom saints. The blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. When Christ came, he came under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. Galatians 4 verse 4, But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law. During the tribulation period a believer will need to confess his sins so that the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse that believer of their sins similar to the way it was practiced under the Old Testament system. Notice it says, If we walk in the light, the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. And so the opposite is also true that if a believer in that age does not walk in the light, 
the blood of Jesus Christ does not cleanse them from all sin. I know this is hard to accept if you have been taught as I have to spiritualize this whole epistle, but just try to take every word literally and apply it to whom it was meant for, in the time that it was meant for and it makes perfect sense. 1 John 1 verse 8 If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. How many foolish people will perish during the last times without ever admitting they were sinners in need of a savior? How many believers during that time will say, concerning their sin, it wasn't that big of a deal? People will be claiming in that day that they are still walking in the light, when they know in their heart that they are not, and they will have unconfessed sin in their life which prevent them from being clean in God's eyes because of their unrighteousness. 1 John 1 verse 9 If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, the we and are in this verse are speaking about Israel under their program during the tribulation period. Today in the dispensation of grace, we already have eternal life dwelling inside us. During this short time period during the tribulation period, the gospel of the kingdom will again be preached, and the Jew will need to endure unto the end of the tribulation period faithfully to enter into their kingdom. Matthew 24 verses 13 to 14, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. As we saw in the previous verse, a person in that day needs to keep short accounts with God, because if they confess their sins, he will forgive them of their sins, and if they refuse to admit their sin it will not be forgiven. I thank God I am forgiven in this dispensation from all of my sins, past, present, and future. That is not the case in the tribulation, and it was not the case before the dispensation of grace began. 1 John 1 verse 10 If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. No one who knows even a little of scripture would dare to say they have not sinned, but this is not referring to us today. It is to those who will need us to keep short accounts with God regarding sin. If a tribulation saint denies to God that he has sinned and does not seek forgiveness, he will not receive forgiveness, and he will have to answer for it for eternity. Chapter 2 Walking in the Light 1 John 2 verse 1 My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. My little children, John uses these words once in the Gospel of John, and nine times here in this epistle. The words little children are important to understand who John is speaking to. Jesus used that term in the Gospel of John when he was speaking to his eleven disciples. It was no coincidence that Jesus waited until he left to use this term. John 13 verses 33 to 35 Little children, yet a little while I am with you, ye shall seek me. And as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, ye cannot come, so now I say to you, a new commandment I give, unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. We have an advocate with the Father. John tells these little children, tribulation saints, that they are not to sin, but if they do that, they have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. Jesus Christ is called the righteous because he was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Hebrews 4 verse 15, For we have not an high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Israel, in that day, will need to go to the Advocate and to confess their sins during this time of great trouble, who will then intercede in their behalf to the Father. We in the body of Christ today do not have an Advocate with the Father, because God the Father already sees us as righteous, because of His Son's finished work on the cross on our behalf. He has already won our case, and we are in Jesus Christ. Israel will have their sins forgiven on the Day of Atonement in the future. In Acts 3 verses 19 to 21, it says that Israel's sins are blotted out when the times of refreshing comes from the Lord, i.e., the kingdom. We receive eternal life the moment we believe while they must go to an advocate for their sins in the tribulation period, just like their kingdom brothers in the first century. You do not need to hire a defense attorney if you are already have had your sins paid for as an individual. Israel as a nation has their sins forgiven in the future on the Day of Atonement prior to their entering into their kingdom. 1 John 2 verse 2 And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. He is the propitiation for our sins. John tells his Jewish readers that Christ is the propitiation for more than just his Jewish hearers going through the tribulation period but also for any believing Gentile around the whole world during any age as well. Propitiation literally means all that we need. What he did is all that we need to receive the forgiveness of sins, 
because God is satisfied with his sacrifice on our behalf. 1 John 2 verse 3, And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. We know him, if we keep his commandments. This book is not written to us. We are not the Jews going through the time of Jacob's trouble. If you read it literally as for the saints during the tribulation period, or for the Jewish saints that were still under the kingdom program in the first century, then you will have no problem with what John tells these saints. Believers back then had to keep Christ's commandments, and they will again in the tribulation period. Notice what Jesus told a rich young ruler back in John's days, and ask yourself, am I under that program today? Matthew 19 verses 16 to 17, And, behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do, that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why chiaest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is, God. But, if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. The answer for us today is no. Of course we do not keep the commandments in order to be saved. We are not under the law and never were or will be, but Israel was and will be again in the tribulation period. Not only are they to keep the law, but they are to obey everything that Christ commanded his apostles to keep. Matthew 28 verses 19 to 20, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you alway, even unto the end of the world. Amen. 1 John 2 verses 4 to 5 He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected, hereby know we that we are in him. In him verily is the love of God perfected. The word perfected means to be made complete. We know that John is referring to the law here when he talks about keeping Christ's commandments, but go and look for yourself at all the commands of Christ and see how many of those you are keeping today. You will see that Christ told his Jewish audience to repent, turn back, and keep the covenant they made with God at Sinai. He did not make the old covenant with us. It was with Israel. They are the focus in the tribulation period, not us. 1 John 2 verse 6, He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. All who are saved in the dispensation of grace are in Christ today, and we can never be taken out of Christ, because of our sin, or it would not be called grace. These saints do not have eternal life as a present possession, and they must abide in Christ, just as Christ said in the Gospel of John to those kingdom saints back during the time of Jesus and the Twelve. John 15 verses 4 to 5 Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches, he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. 1 John 2 verses 7 to 8 Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. The word which ye have heard from the beginning, John is referring to what he said back in the Gospel of John in chapter 1 about Christ being the light of the world. John 1 verses 3 to 7 All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John, the same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. 1 John 2 verses 9 to 11, He that saith he is in the light, and hadeth his brother, is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hadeth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. A strong emphasis is placed on abiding in the light, or in the truth, which are synonymous. We today are placed into the light when we believe the truth, and we are kept by God. After the body of Christ is raptured, Israel will need to abide in the light that they have and not draw back. We today in the dispensation of grace, cannot draw back. 1 John 2 verses 12 to 14 I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you and ye have overcome the wicked one. John writes to three classes of believers in the tribulation period, which is evident by their overcoming the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, 
This is both a reference to the young as well as to the young in faith, and he says their sins are forgiven them for his, Christ's, name's sake, and because ye have known the Father. I write unto you, fathers. Then he mentions the fathers and says the same thing twice about them to place a special emphasis on the fact that they have known him, Christ, the Eternal One, that is from the beginning. I write unto, young men, this is to encourage them, because as he mentions twice, that they have overcome the wicked one, the Antichrist. It is the time when young men are spiritually motivated the most, they will ever be to follow God even to their deaths. Satan knows this often better than we do, and he seeks to turn young men's hearts away from God at this time, but not these men. They abide in the truth. 1 John 2 verses 15 to 17, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Love not the world, the world means the things of this world. What God wants for all men of all ages or dispensations to realize is that the things of this world are temporal, temporary, and the things of God are eternal. The child of God needs to see that he must set his affection on the things of God, or he will be lured away by the things of this world, and they have a consuming effect upon us, and we can become of no value spiritually speaking to ourselves or those around us. This is especially important to those saints enduring the tribulation period. Doing the will of God at that terribly tough time will guarantee they abide forever in God's kingdom. 1 John 2 verse 18 Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. It is the last time, this term only occurs four times, and all four of them have a tribulation context associated with them. It also occurs later in a chapter of the same epistle, along with once in 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1 verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. 1 Peter 1 verse 13, wherefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. We are not waiting today for grace to be brought to us today. It has already come, but tribulation saints will be in a whole different context than us. Antichrist shall come, the evil one mentioned throughout the book of the Revelation. Even now there are many antichrists, anyone who leads people away from the light and into darkness is an antichrist, whereby we know that it is the last time, John links his day with the day that is still yet in the future, and he calls them both the last time. These two times have been interrupted today by the dispensation of grace. The last time will begin again after the dispensation of grace ends at the rapture. 1 John 2 verses 19 to 20 They went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest, that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. They went out from us, some associated with the little flock, remnant church, in the tribulation period will give in to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, and they will depart from those that abide in the truth. John calls them something that we may think is very harsh, but it is still very true. He calls them antichrists, and says that even now, there are many antichrists. He of course is not talking about the antichrist, but those who choose the pleasures the mark of the beast, can provide them temporarily. They are choosing not to be on God's side and receive God's provision, but rather choosing the world and its leader as their God and provider, which makes them on the opposite team of Christ i.e., on the Antichrist's team. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things, this is speaking about those that have been baptized with the Holy Spirit. Today, we are baptized by the Holy Spirit, not with the Holy Spirit, because we are not Israel under the law. You do not have an unction from the Holy One today and you do not know all things. 1 John 2 verses 21 to 23, I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar, but he that deneath that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, that deneath the Father and the Son. Whosoever deneath the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth the Son, hath the Father also. Who is a liar, but he that deneath that Jesus is the Christ? John is focusing on the lie of Satan, and he reminds them that no lie is of the truth no matter how well it is packaged by the world. The main lie of the devil at this time in history will be that Jesus is not the Christ, but an imposter, and that the Antichrist is really the true Messiah of Israel. He is Antichrist, that beneath the Father and the Son, he will be the one saying in the early days, Look, I have given you your temple back and your sacrifices, I am your Messiah, worship me. 
and multitudes will believe him. This will be the litmus test in the tribulation period to judge whether someone is abiding in the light or hiding in darkness with the rest of the world. Sadly, many Jews will believe the Antichrist by denying the Son. If they deny the Son, then they also deny the Father. You cannot have one without the other. There will be many Antichrists in that day, sadly. 1 John 2 verses 24 to 26, Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son, and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Let that therefore abide in you. Antichrists will be trying to seduce these saints to quit abiding in the truth with their arguments that appeal to many. But what awaits them that do not is everlasting darkness and punishment. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son, and in the Father. There is no way you can spiritualize or explain away the clear teachings of this small book. Believers in the time of the tribulation period people can turn away, fall away, quit abiding, or make shipwreck their faith. We, today, cannot. By them not allowing those things they have learned from the beginning through the ministry of the 144,000, and the two witnesses to remain, they can lose their salvation. We cannot. The promise that is given to these first-century kingdom believers and tribulation saints is eternal life in their kingdom, not in heaven, but on the earth. 1 John 2 verse 27, But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. The anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. This is something that happened with the little flock, Luke 12 verse 322, in the early part of the book of Acts, and it will happen again for these tribulation saints. God will give them the anointing, the baptism with the Holy Ghost, to supernaturally assist them during this time in knowing and keeping God's commandments. Similar to what the kingdom saints will have when God writes his laws on Israel's hearts in the kingdom. They only have the anointing when they are abiding in Christ during the tribulation. It is a permanent possession in the kingdom. Remember how the little flock had to continually pray to be filled again and again with the Holy Spirit for power to be bold witnesses? This will happen again after the body of Christ is raptured out of here. Christ was anointed at his baptism with the Holy Spirit. Acts 4 verse 27, For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles, and the people of Israel, were gathered together. Acts 10 verse 38, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Ye need not that any man teach you. Can you say that you have that anointing and don't need anyone else to teach you anything? Because you can just ask the Holy Spirit to teach you and he does? No, you don't. 1 John 2 verse 28, And now, little children, abide in him, that, when he shall appear, we may have confidence, and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Little children, again, we find the identifier of little children used as Jesus used it to talk to his strictly Jewish audience who were commandment-keeping, followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. These little children here, are first-century Jewish believers, and members of that little flock, but John is also talking to a future group of Jewish believers in the tribulation period. Abide in him, they are told to abide in him so that they will not be ashamed when they, his Jewish audience at the end of the tribulation period, see him return to this earth at the end of the tribulation period to set up his kingdom. The believer today is not waiting for Christ to appear at his revelation after the tribulation period, when every eye shall see him but we are waiting for his secret return in the clouds to take us up in the rapture. 1 John 2 verse 29, If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that every one that doeth righteousness is born of him. Born of him, this is the same thing that Jesus taught Nicodemus in John chapter 3. Ye must be born again. Over and over again in this epistle, the emphasis is on the individual doing, abiding, and keeping the commandments of God. If John's audience does righteousness, then, they are born of him. Paul never said anything like that to the body of Christ. John was not talking to us in the body of Christ, he was talking to Israel under the law. Today we are kept by the power of God, and we are his unconditionally. The tribulation saints will have a conditional relationship during that time. Chapter 3 The Sons of God 1 John 3 verse 1 Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, 
because it knew him not. The sons of God, these tribulation saints are so loved by God that God wants to call them his sons. The world will hate the sons of God in those days, just as it hated Christ and his followers 2,000 years ago. John uses the phrase sons of God also in his gospel letter, and in it he says something that will be just as true in the tribulation period as it was back in John's day. John 1 verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Those that believe on the name of Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God will be given power by God to become sons of God at his return. But during the tribulation they will have supernatural help keeping the commandments of God. God's Spirit is poured out upon all flesh as it did partially on Pentecost in a total fulfillment during those dark days. They will receive power during the tribulation period to resist the mark of the Antichrist but they will have to endure unto the end of that time by using what they have been given and not given to the world. They will not be sinless in those days, but they will be baptized with the Holy Spirit as they were on Pentecost and will have power to do many things in those days that we are not able to do today, such as is recorded in Mark 16 verse 15. When we are saved today in the church age, we are immediately children of God by faith and we are sealed until the day of redemption. 1 John 3 verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now are we the sons of God. When a person believed Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God in those days, they become sons of God themselves by inheritance. When he shall appear, we shall be like him. Those that endure, who are the overcomers during that terrible time of Jacob's trouble, will inherit eternal life in their kingdom. Their bodies will change, because their bodies are born in sin, and must be changed to be like Christ's body, to live eternally in their kingdom. Jesus' body was not the same once he rose from the dead. 1 John 3 verses 3 to 5, And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, the hope that they will have an eternal body and live forever. Because they have that hope, they are helped by the power of the Holy Spirit not to commit sin. They are to purify themselves, to keep themselves from the temptation to go back to the world. And in him is no sin. Christ himself said he was sinless. Which of you convinceth me of sin? John 8 verse 46, the writer of Hebrews said, Hebrews 4 verse 15, For we have not an high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. 1 John 3 verse 6, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not, whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. The very word abideth speaks of continuing in a certain way. When someone abides at a certain residence, they don't just spend one night there, but they literally take up their abode there. In Romans chapter 6, the Apostle Paul tells the believer that in the dispensation of grace a believer doesn't have to sin, but in the very same chapter, he tells us that we will sin. The believer during the tribulation period will be living under a different system, the kingdom program, and he will be empowered differently than we are today to resist sin as they were in the early part of the book of Acts. There they were practicing kingdom living and were selling all that they had, and they were sharing it, while all being in one accord with each other. This will happen again during the tribulation period as there will be an absolute necessity for it in order for believers to survive this terrible time. 1 John 3 verses 7 to 8 Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Even as he is righteous, Christ will destroy the works of the devil at his appearing. All the world's systems that oppose God will be torn down. Righteousness will reign as the kingdom of heaven comes down to this earth. The works of the devil, everything that Satan ever built in the past 6,000 years will all be destroyed, as well as whatever he does for the season he is loosed at the end of the millennial kingdom. 1 John 3 verse 9, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, you are not born of God, because you have sinned since you have believed, haven't you? Yes, you have. John is not talking to you. Be careful using terminology that is exclusive to Israel under the law, that was not meant for you. This is not talking about a believer in the body of Christ today. 
but rather a recipient of the gospel of the kingdom during the tribulation period. Do not try to compare yourself with these people. You are not Israel under the law. His seed remaineth in him. What is his seed? Luke 8 verses 9 to 11, And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. He cannot sin, because he is born of God. They will have supernatural help in the future, to refrain from sin that we do not possess. Today our inward man does not sin, but we still have the outer man that was born in sinful flesh and we must die to the outer man. 1 John 3 verses 10 to 11, In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. The children of God, are those that are not sinning with the world and taking their mark. These Jews that recognized that Jesus is the Son of God loved one another, and John is instructing these tribulation saints that you can recognize another believer by their love towards one another that can only come from God. The children of the devil, the ones who take the mark, and do not care for their brothers, and they will betray them to the government. 1 John 3 verse 12, Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brothers righteous. How were they to love one another? Not as Cain loved Abel. His relationship with his brother fluctuated based on how he felt at a particular moment. Cain tolerated his brother when he didn't bother him. He probably appreciated Abel from time to time when he, Abel, did something for him. The true test of love is when someone does something that is contrary to what we would want. Cain actually hated his brother, as evidenced by his anger, which led to his murdering his brother. 1 John 3 verses 13 to 15, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hadeth his brother is a murderer and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. We have passed from death unto life. God will give these believers in the end times his Holy Spirit, and they will love their brothers sacrificially because they are sons of God, and as sons, they will imitate the love of God in their life. John 5 verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life. 1 John 3 verses 16 to 18, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. We ought to lay down our lives for the brethren, there will be many times when believers' lives will be at risk in that terrible day, and there will be many opportunities to help their fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Those that are true believers will be compelled to help one another. If someone refuses to help a believer in those days, and they themselves claim to be a believer, that claim will be baseless. 1 John 3 verses 19 to 22, And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments. We today do not have whatsoever we ask, because it is not necessary that God takes care of us in this time of great ease. When half of the world has died because of war and famine, and a believer needs something God will provide in those days, whatever they need. 1 John 3 verses 23 to 24, And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son Jesus Christ, and love one another, as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us, by the Spirit which he hath given us. And hereby we know that he abideth in us, the key to a believer's ability to love one another in such a time as they will face is right here in this verse. The Holy Spirit will be given unto those who believe that Jesus is the Christ, to enable them to endure that terrible time unto the end.